Thanks for joining us. Earlier this month, we reported on a Rastafarian church that found a legal loophole to bring marijuana to Madison. Since then, about 6,000 people have joined the church, but things are starting to get a little sticky. Jamie Perez now with how things have gone up in smoke. Jamie? This issue has caused some controversy on both sides. The city attorney's office is saying they cannot operate and ordered them to cease and desist, saying they're not a legitimate church. But the founders of this church say the city's argument is invalid. Since first getting public recognition for being the first of its kind in Madison, the Lion of Judah House of Rastafari has hit a new high. People from around the state have been rolling up to become members of this church. But while membership has grown, it's also blazing a hazy trail for the city attorney's office. They are claiming to be a church. I have not seen any documentation or anything that supports that they are in fact a church. They don't really have a way to prove that I'm doing the things that they don't want me to do. They're accusing me of selling, but we don't sell. They're accusing me of giving it to to anyone. We only give it to members. Jesse Schwark has said his church has been the topic of a clouded debate, especially after police came in and seized all the marijuana that was visible while they were responding to a noise complaint. No arrests were made, no charges filed, but the city attorney's office did deliver this letter to him asking him to cease and desist. This letter puts church in quotation marks and goes on to say, even if you are a legitimate church, possessing and selling a Schedule One controlled substance is not legal under Wisconsin's state statute. The letter also cites previous court cases that have tried to use freedom of religion for reason to use drugs during religious practices, but says even when the action is in accord with one's religious convictions, it is not totally free from legislative restrictions. Right there is a discriminatory letter. They're just fronting the church so they can sell cannabis. Jennifer says she hasn't heard from Jesse since the cease and desist was given to him, nor has she seen any of the documents to prove his case. But Jesse provided us with several documents so far. One is from the state of Wisconsin endorsing him as a nonprofit church with his purpose statement written down with what he intended to use the building for, and another from the IRS that shows he's a tax-exempt entity for his religious purposes. It's assumed that you're not sincere, but once you prove that, then the burden shifts upon the other party. So now now they have to do all the proving, not me. The burden is on them to prove that their services are, are protected and that our regulation of marijuana is infringing on their ability to practice their religion. How do you prove that they're not using it for that purpose? Um, I Honestly, I don't know how they would actually prove it. So what happens now? Jennifer said she's made the landlord aware of what's going on, and right now the ball is in her court. She can give him a five-day notice to vacate, and then if he does not vacate, she can proceed to evict him from the premises if she chooses. But if she does not choose and she supports what they do, what happens then? Then we will have to evaluate the situation and make a decision. Police told me today that they can't comment on the legality of it all because they're still actively investigating this. The city attorney's office said they could file a public nuisance action in circuit court should the landlord not take action and eventually could ha have an order to get them shut down. Jesse said he is ready to file a lawsuit if he needs to. It's a story that we'll continue to follow. Jamie, thank you. The four